Hey everybody, Prepper Nurse One here. It is Saturday, it is February 13th, 2021. Uh, actually, it's about 17 degrees right now, that's in town, so it's not, it's not that up here, but uh, it's not a bad day, not a bad day at all. So, uh, sun's been out, um, came out pretty early, so that's been good, so we've been getting some good solar. So people have asked me uh, to do an overview of my solar system again because we got a lot of new subscribers. So I am going to do that for you guys today. So we're going to start out here and we're going to talk about the solar panels. Okay. Now I will say the one mistake that I have made and I will readily admit it. <laughs> um, I have three different brands of solar panels. Now the three panels that you see on the end here are 100 watt panels. Those are Brian's. Um, they go over to the camper and they're hooked up to the batteries in the camper. So we just stuck them on the end of the rack so that that uh, keeps that powered up over there for him. But what we have here are the first six panels that you see. Um, they are 250 watt panels. Those were the first panels that we bought when we got up here to the homestead six years ago. Then the next four you see are 255 watt panels. We bought them um, I believe it was the after that first winter we bought those and added to what we had. Uh, then the last five that you see on the end there are 300 watt panels. So here's a problem that happens. With the different panels, um, you should stick with the same type of panel. So if you're putting in 250 watt panels, you should stick with 250 watt panels all the way because what happens is my 300 watt panels are actually only going to basically do what the 250 watt panels are doing. So it brings you down. Um, you're not going to be as efficient because of that. So what the game plan is here down the road, uh, I don't know if it's going to happen this year or next year, but uh, I plan on getting 400 watt panels uh, all you know for all 15 of those panels. Okay, so if I do that, then uh, you know it'll give me uh, if if I get the f 15 400 watt panels, that'll give me 6,000 watts. Right now, what we have up there is 4,020 watts. Okay, but again, it's not pulling in that much because of the fact that. Uh, it's brought down because of the 250 watt panels. I hope you understand what I mean by that. Uh, but it's only going to uh, work at that efficiency. Okay. So uh, the solar rack itself, we built that ourselves. Uh, we put that in two years ago. And uh, greatest thing ever. Um, if you remember anybody that's watched my channel for any length of time, we started out over in this area and I had uh, some racks over here uh, that th there was like oh, the six panels were this way up and down that way and then I had uh, the other panels I actually had uh, I'm trying to think I had five of them I believe in the other rack and then I had the three were just sitting because I didn't have any place to put them at that point in time so they were in racks here in the front uh, not being you know getting as much as they should because they were not higher so when we built a new solar rack it really made a difference in our output because when the sun comes up it's catching those panels and it catches them pretty much all day because this way here is south so the sun's coming up over here once it gets above the trees we start getting power and it works really really well so what we did when we, okay, so the original run, just so you guys know too, so we had the panels were over here, the original run was into um, the shop, and I had the battery room in the shop. So it would travel from here, underground, through over there, and then into the building. When we built the solar rack, uh, we ended up running, so we had everything there, everything comes up underneath the battery room over here now, but we didn't have the battery room the first um, winter that we had uh, the solar rack in. We just built the battery room last year. So the run actually was going from there to that point, this way, all here, over and into what was the battery room. Uh, you lose a lot of uh, power when that happens because of the fact, uh, you know, you're traveling a great distance. But so now, um, when we built the battery room last year, and I'll just kind of come over here and I'll show you. So 
So what you see over here is the pipes here going under the ground and there's another pipe over there on the third uh, one over there. Okay, so they go underground, they're underneath, they travel underground and they come up on the underneath uh, the battery room. So the battery room we built uh, last year and uh, so cost-wise of the battery room. Now the door we already had on site so I didn't have to buy a new door but we ended up uh, we insulated this battery room with rock wool insulation. Um, let me come back here a little bit. I don't know if you can see it from this angle. Let me see. No, anyway, but it, we have a metal roof on top of the uh, the battery room as well. But uh, I used the rock wool insulation for insulation in here. Uh, underneath is insulated. On top here is also insulated. And then there's like a dead space up above there. I can, I'm can. i eventually going to cut a hole up here. Uh, use that area. I can use that for storage. Okay, so once we built the battery room, I upgraded. Okay, so the batteries that I had before were these lead acid batteries. These are uh, L16, uh, they're Trojan L16E batteries, okay? Uh, it's a lead acid battery. These are lithium ion batteries. Uh, they are not cheap, they are very, very expensive, I'll be honest with you but they're really really awesome uh, they're a great battery very very efficient they charge up very very well uh, right now at this time of day we have 527 watts coming in on this side we have 401 watts coming in on this side and as you can see from the monitor the batteries are 27.16 and it's pointed upwards the arrow is here and that means we're bringing power into the system so we're not using as much um, is we're bringing in okay so the way that the system works uh, these here are MPP charge controller and inverter all in one so I used to have um, if you guys have been watching the channel I had uh, like two charge controllers and I'll explain the difference what everything is and then I had uh, an Ames inverter so what happens is the power is coming in from the solar system and it goes into the charge controller to start out with. So what the charge controller is going to do, it is going to regulate how much power is going into your battery system because you don't want to overcharge your batteries. So what happens is once you reach a certain level with your batteries, it will dump the excess power. Okay, So that way you're never going to overcharge your batteries. But um, you know that really honestly only happens in the summertime this time of year it just does not happen um, but you know with the days are getting longer it definitely makes a difference but um, so anyway so that's what ha that's what the charge controllers do it regulates what you're bringing into the batteries making sure that you don't overcharge your batteries so when people ask well well what happens if you get too much power in your batteries it's not going to happen because it's an automatic thing that once the batteries reach a certain level then it'll just dump the rest of the power. So what's that level? 28.6. That is the max that you're going to want to put into these batteries. Okay, you don't want to go any higher than that. With the batteries being at 27, you know, one 20, like this one here says 27.2. Uh, this is 27.1 on this one. This says 27.2. So the different batteries are you know reading differently, but overall it's about 27.2 overall. Okay, now. The inverter, what the inverter does, all this power coming in off the solar system and into these batteries is DC power. Okay, so DC power comes in, and then what you're doing is you're, the, the inverter converts DC power to AC power. AC power is what's running most homes. Um, you know, most homes don't run on DC power, they run on AC. So we have our houses, both my house and my mom's and my sister's house, wired up for AC. Okay, So the inverter converts that power from DC to AC to be able to run both of the homes. Now these are breakers that we have, so if there is a power surge, um, something major, that will kick that off and it will shut the system down. And in that case, you just have to reset them and turn them back on. It's a safety valve for the system. Uh, over in here are some more breakers. 
So I could turn these different breakers off and that's going to affect power going to my house, power going to mom and Becky's house and stuff like that. Um, again, it's just another, another safety feature that you have there. Uh, but uh, So um, these I upgraded to these charge controllers and inverters all in one from the other ones that I had. I had an Ames inverter and then I had uh, the Midnight Classic 150 uh, charge controllers. Now, I still have them. They're still good. Um, I can utilize them in another project if I want to. They're not bad in any way, shape, or form. Uh, it just, for with running these batteries, these lithium-ion batteries, it's much more efficient to do this system. So now, if I want to, when I, when I do upgrade to um, more solar panels, I will need to put in another charge controller because I'm going to have to break this system up uh, you know per per thing so you basically want to have about 2,000 watts for this one about 2,000 watts for that one uh, once I upgrade my my uh, solar array up to a 6,000 watt solar array I will add a third one in here so that helps so you're not overcharging one of these and, and popping your breakers all the time and shutting your system down um, the system is also grounded. You see this ground wire here. That goes out. There is a rod into the ground, um, and that's into the ground probably, um, probably, oh, God, I think it's a six or eight foot rod that you have to pound down, and that was a pain in the butt. But that's, every, so everything is grounded, um, so there's no issues there. And this little thing here is wired in just so it kind of lets us know. Now, while we've been sitting here talking, uh, the the power's gone is up to 27.20. Okay, we're actually increasing what we've been bringing in here, so now that's why that's higher. So there's like 550 watts coming on that side, 470. Oh, now it's up to 500. So again, it's just it bounces around depending on where the sun is. But uh, I keep this light on this time of year because it's very very cold outside. Uh, like I said, it, in town it's 17, so it's probably about 10 up here. But I'm in here, you can't see my breath. Very, very insulated building. We did that on purpose, and we keep this light on all the time just for extra light. These charge controllers on here, these are kicking off um, heat as well, okay? So I actually got to pull these off and clean these screens here at some point just to, you know. But anyway, so it keeps it warm enough in here. These lithium-ion batteries, you do not want them to freeze. Uh, it will destroy the battery. So if you keep a good charge in your battery, uh, you keep it in an environment where it's going to be warm enough. It doesn't have to be, you know, 75 degrees in here, but you know, you, you want to keep it above freezing. So it, the the batteries are going to run much more efficiently. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight batteries. Um, so when I increase my solar array, I could add more batteries as well if I want to. So uh, that's obviously an option that may we may end up doing down the road here. I love these. These things are absolutely awesome. Um, we got these last year, and um, I can't remember exactly what they're called <laughs> because it's like a, it's a long drawn up, but they're a 24 um, volt system. So uh, that's what we have. We we started out with a 12 volt system when we first started our solar system. Then we went to a 24 volt system. I could increase it to a 48 volt system if I wanted to, but the 24 volt system works really, really well for our needs, for what we need to have, and uh, anything that I want to run, I can run. Uh, you know, winter time, and I will show you out here as well. Hold on a second. Let's go back outside. So in the winter time, when you're not getting as much sunshine, right? What do you do? How are you, you know, getting enough power to keep everything going to run all the houses? That's why you have a backup generator. Now, in time, I plan on upgrading this to, uh, you know, something much more efficient, probably a propane generator, something like that. But right now, that's what we're using, and it works great. Uh, winter time, I may run this, and again, depending on the day. So an example, today, uh, this morning I turned it on. And I ran it for about an hour and a half, probably from seven to seven to eight thirty, 
and then I could see that the sun was coming out, so I turned it off because I knew we were going to get sunshine today. Um, it is in the afternoon now, and so, uh, you know, we're bringing in still more power than we're using. Now, on a day where it's going to be very overcast or very, very cloudy, what we'll do is I will run this probably for about four hours in the morning, and then I will run it for about four more hours in the evening. So that's a lot of running the generator. But again, it really depends on the weather, what, what the weather's doing, how much sunshine we're getting. Uh, you know, sunny days, it really makes a difference. You know, I can get away with running this very, very little. But wintertime is just, uh, you're in the northeast, it's, it's brutal. I mean, it's just, uh, you're, you know, that's why when you build your solar systems, if you're building a solar system, and again, depending on what your wants and needs are, okay, um, I'm running two houses off my solar system so what are we running um, you know mom and Becky got a coffee maker you know they got the microwave uh, they have a refrigerator I have a refrigerator there's a small fridge in Heather's room and uh, you know so that's um, the stove that they have is a propane stove so that's that stove runs on propane it doesn't run on electricity you really have to figure out what your wants and needs are uh, anything I want to run if I'm running the well pump to uh, to fill up the uh, the well okay so here I found it too by the way um, here's the well well the well head itself is on the back side of their st steps over here okay so I have a plug over here that I run an extension cord from the outlet plug it in that runs the pump which feeds water into the holding tank this is a thousand gallon holding tank uh, works really efficiently, works great. I've had no issues with it at all, and uh, it's been fantastic. So so I hope that explains that a little bit. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free in the comments, and if I can answer your questions, I will. Um, you know, if you're trying to set something up, you can obviously go smaller scale, but the one thing I would definitely tell you what I would recommend to anybody Go with quality products as opposed to cheap. Because if you buy cheap, it's not going to be as efficient. And then what's going to end up happening, you're going to realize it's not as efficient as you would like it to be. And you're going to end up going back and spending more money to buy something that is more efficient. Uh, that is definitely, it happens. It happens all the time. It happened to me. So, I mean, uh, I started out, I couldn't even tell you. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think. I've gone from... The cheapy Harbor Freight charge controller, you know, 1500 watt, 2000 watt charge controller, uh, you know, to uh, the Ames charge controller that I bought, which was, I think, I got about a 6000 watt charge controller, to these ones that I have now. And these are, like I said, these are awesome. So, uh, very, very efficient, and that's, and that's what you want. You, you know, you're, you don't want to waste your power that you're bringing in. Now, one of the advantages, too, and I, I wanted to mention this really quickly while I was thinking about it, with having that run from here to here, okay, so having your battery room close to your solar array really makes a difference because you're not losing as much juice that you're bringing in because you have such a short distance to travel. And that, I'm telling you right now, is a huge, huge thing. You want to have that run as short as possible. Now... From the battery room, I have a line underground coming into my place. We have a line underground going into their place. That's fine. That doesn't make any difference with that. You're not losing power that way. It's that run from the solar panels to your batteries to charge up your batteries. That's where the difference is. Okay? So anyway, I hope you guys, like I said, any questions, please go ahead and throw them in the comments and I'll try to get to them. Um, I hope this helps. I hope you guys get an idea. Uh, you know, again, you don't have to go with a system as large as mine. It's not cheap. I will tell you that right now. Uh, those batteries that you see in there, they are about $800 a piece. So you figure, figure it out. Eight batteries, you know, times uh, 800. You know, again, to me, well worth the money. Uh, again, being independent, not being grid-tied. Um, I am completely off-grid, so I have my own independent power. And so, you know, I have the Prepper Nurse One Power Company, which is nice. And uh, you know what? I, I don't charge myself exorbitant freeze, or fees. Um, I don't have a line charge. <laughs> it's really nice. Now, 
you know, you have to realize you're going to have issues here and there, and you got to be able to be ready for those and, and, and deal with them and stuff like that. Having good people on your team makes a big, big difference. Uh, you know, Brian, my electrician, um, he has been instrumental with helping with getting things squared away. Uh, awesome, awesome guy. Very, very skilled. Knows what he's doing. And so he's, you know, he's been a huge asset as far as getting everything squared away. Uh, you know, it's when we changed everything over and stuff like that. But it's been, it's been fun. But, uh, you know, I'm not just, and, and here's the, and here's the other part too. And I think, I don't know if I mentioned this before. This last year, once we built the battery room, was the first time, and we upgraded our batteries, it was the first time since I have been here that we are running our power 24 hours a day. Uh, before that, up to this point, we would shut down at night, and uh, that's what we did. Uh, you know, we would run all day, and uh, at nighttime we would shut the power off, and then when we woke up in the morning, I would turn the power back on. Uh, we had to do that because I didn't have the battery capacity to be able to run 24 hours a day. So again, what it comes down to realistically, wants and needs. What do you want? What do you need? Um, I knew that uh, it would be more cost effective for mom and Becky as well to run off my system as well. So we bought more batteries. Um, we ended up buying, I had five, and then we ended up buying three more batteries. And that really made a big, big difference. Uh, so, you know, and again, I could always add a couple more. Um, I have room right now. I could probably add two more batteries right now. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do that this year or not because I have a lot of other projects that I want to do. And uh, But anyway, so I hope that really helps. I hope that answers any questions that people have. I know people had been um, asking about the system and, and what we did. But, you know, if you... What I really do need to do is I need to put a playlist together and go from the old old videos and show you where we were, what we screwed up, what uh, mistakes we made, and, uh, you know, major, major learning curve, major learning curve. But again, uh, well, well worth it in the long run, in my opinion. I don't get a monthly bill, which I love, and uh, they don't own me, and that's what I love, too. I love that independence, and I love that freedom. So, uh, and you know, if you're going to be someplace long term, uh, it's not a bad idea to have some kind of backup power source. Uh, really, really, even if on a smaller scale to charge up a laptop, to charge up, uh, you know, uh, batteries, to charge up, uh, you know, if or just run a few lights or whatever the case may be. Not a bad idea to have it all, okay? So, um, and you can do it a lot cheaper, you know, as far as a smaller scale system. You don't have to have a huge, great big system. I mean, you could go out and purchase one 400 watt solar panel, okay? Get that, set up a small system, and you can produce a decent amount of power with that. Again, you're not going to run a whole house, no. But you would have something as opposed to nothing, and that's a good thing. So, anyway, guys, I'm going to jump off here from now. I will be doing another video later. Uh, I hope this helps. I hope this answers some questions. And, again, if you have any other questions, feel free in the comments to, to put some in there. And uh, that's it. Okay? So, remember, guys, we are all in this together. That is important to remember. We are one race called the human race, which is also very important to remember. Um, and also, remember to hug and kiss the ones you love. Tell them every single day, tomorrow is not guaranteed. We never know what's going to happen in life. So it's really important, and we tell the people that we care about every day how we feel. And lastly, STD, step, thing, and day. It's one step at a time, one thing at a time, and one day at a time. Whatever you're trying to do, whatever you're trying to accomplish, you can do it. The only person that is going to stop you from reaching your goals is you. That's it. Nobody else can stop you. Uh, there will be people out there telling you that you cannot do this, that you can't make it happen. But you don't listen to that negativity. Um, don't listen to that negativity. Don't listen to those people telling you what you cannot accomplish. Because you can do anything that you want. Okay? Um, if you set your mind to it, set realistic goals and then make them happen. All right, guys. I will talk to you all later. Have a great day. Prepper Nurse One, out for now.